when we're on in today's guest we've got the beautiful Jane Park. How are you, Jane? I'm all right, aye. How are you? Good, man. First of all, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate you taking the time. Like I say, there's no questions on this show. So, obviously, the youngest Euro Millions winner. So, like I say, before that, we'll go back to where you grew up and that and how it all started. <laughs> so, you ask him, man. Ah, that's us. We're on. That's us. <laughs> Um, so do you want me to go back to like when well, I won it or no, just... No, just when you, where you grew up now, where, where you, what was your life like um, before you won it? So before I won it, I grew up in a place called Nidre, um, it's nice down there. It's uh, quite rough, obviously it's one of the roughest probably in Edinburgh, but... Um, Proud of it? It's, it's what it is, it's home in exactly. it, so it's, it's a fun laugh down there, but... Um, I've picked up this Glasgow accent, Colleen. Yeah, <laughs> good. I don't think she wants to be one of her own. <laughs> um, well, it's all right, Nidre. It's, um, it's all right, like, you know everybody, so it's like, it's what it is, isn't it? So, school, it's just a bit like shitty, eh? Like, it's no, mm -hmm. nothing, it's no Beverly Hills, you know what I mean? It's quite um, rough, sort of, each to the rain. You've got to get your own path and make your own way. Exactly. Like and uh, growing up was probably hard, probably harder than normal for me because obviously like, I had issues at home and that and then um, it stayed with a lot of family parents, mm -hmm. um, grandparents even and aunties and that, family members and I think people just didn't see that side to it. Can people think I'm this or I've been brought up in this big uh -huh. posh world now and I've not. Uh, I've been in behaviour schools, I've been in secure units, you know, so, I mean there's loads mm -hmm. that people don't even know about mm -hmm. me. Um, so I've left, uh, I was in a behaviour school in Stirling and um, done really well, done my exams and that and I wanted better, I was like some, so I had to go uh, to like a panel kind of thing and say look I want to stay on another year at the school, I was like I want to kind of look generals in my exams but I was like I want credits. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so they were like, would they, get, they let me stay on because I'm a December born so I could stay on till the next Is this a secure unit? No, it was this, that wasn't a secure unit, it's like a behaviour school. So mm -hmm. like I stayed there Monday to Friday and I had like a key work and stuff and then I got back to my mum's on the weekend. Um provided I went back on the Monday morning for school. Mm -hmm. But um Sometimes you go missing. Aye, sometimes there's not that missing <laughs> <laughs> um, but <clears throat> that was the way it was for a couple of years and it was good because it was structure, it was um it was what I needed in my life at that time. Bit I, was bit, uh, I was a bit after the nails and um, wasn't really listening to anybody's advice and that, so it was good. And I got my exams while it's done it again. I left there and I had a job in Charlie Miller's in Edinburgh, it was a really good hairdresser. Was, that's what I wanted to do, and it was really good. And then <clears throat> I just wasn't enjoying that. Like I thought I was going, I was like, oh, it's got to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't. So I was going back to meet mum, I was greeting, I was upset, and I was just like, I didn't want to be in this hairdresser. I was like, oh, I was bothered, but it was paying her big money. So she was like, listen, mm -hmm. if you're that unhappy in that job, like, leave it, you'll find something else. Can you book good qualifications? You've just left school. So I was like, right. So then I managed, I went for an interview in an office job in Broughton Street, just over the other side of here. And they were like, oh, we want you. It was only like a six, a nine month contract, say, and um and I'd done that in the office, photocopy and answer phone calls, which is the Scottish Council for Voluntary mm -hmm. Organisation. It was good, it was all older, older folk in the office. But it's good that you've always been working as well, for an early age, Aye, 15, so 16, and like I say, coming through secure units and all the places, there's no stability, mm -hmm. so we can be a bit of a rebel. Aye. Do you know what I mean? But like I say, still working and nobody sees that side of you, people just see in the paper, portray you, she's this, she's that, but like I say, you've got a great side, I know you, you're obviously daft on the drink, there's no fuck's sake, I'm one of the worst, but, but like, when you started, where did you buy your lottery ticket? So I bought the ticket, so I was on my way to work, I used to get off the top of uh -huh. street and I used to go into uh, checkers and get my roll and then I used to go into the shop next door and buy Chris and Juice and that, right? And uh, So I went in and I bought back out my Chris and Juice because I normally wait on my roll getting mm -hmm. cooked. So I came back out and it said uh, guaranteed 100 UK millionaires this Friday or whatever it was. So I thought, mm, I'm going to put a lottery ticket on. So I went back in. And I was like, can I get a, like, a lucky ticket for lucky dip. Friday? Yeah, lucky dip. Uh, it must have been the Monday or the Tuesday. And he said, uh, you got ID? And I was like, ID? So obviously I knew I was all right, I was 17. But... So I gave him the ID. He was like, £2. And I was like, £2. I thought it was a pound. I was like, £2. <laughs> oh, I didn't like it. So, uh, so he gave me that ticket. I got my wallet into work. And uh, I never shut up about this ticket. Like, I, I, it was weird. Like I just knew that I was going to win. Like, even on the Friday, we got paid on the Thursday. I left work on the Friday, packed up my office. I said, uh, 
And I've packed up my office bag, like I've got my bag and I said to my boss, I'll not be here on Monday morning, I said, so I've got to win the Euro Millions tonight, right? He's like, hi Jane, I'll see you on Monday, right? So <laughs> I went out on the Friday night with my mum and I spent a bomb like my wages. I was like, I need to stay in for the rest of the weekend. So I sat in on the Saturday night, me and my mum were watching a film and I said, I could be sitting here on a million pounds. And I still didn't even think to check the ticket. I was like, uh -huh. oh my God. So I went through the Saturday night and on the Sunday I woke up and I thought, I'm going to check that lottery ticket. So I just could click the ride. I was like, right. So I checked it online and I was like, it was like the code bit, you know how you get like your numbers, you get like Jade or Grey and then there's uh -huh. numbers, right? So I checked it and it was matching and I was like, no, oh, so that's not right. So I went through to my mum, she was hoovering, and I was like, turn the hoover for I was like, I've won a million pounds. She was like, fuck off, Jane. She was like, fuck, I'm not even. I was like, I swear. I was like, look, and she was like, phone your nana, because my nana plays lottery. Uh -huh. So I phoned my nana, and I was like, I think I've She was like, your best bet is to take it into the shop, can I do that? Mm -hmm. I took it, they scan it. I was like, that right. Shoggers on, trainers on, running Who, at this shop. Just you... myself, my mum thought I was pure. Oh, my mum was like, you're a, like, I'm a pure high contract, uh -huh. right? And I make this big mountain out of Mohem. My mum's like, you've no, uh -huh. Jane, like you're overthinking it. I was like, ah, up to the shop myself. Pick up with my bra, I thought Kylie is that. Running up to the shop, so I go to the shop and I was like, I think I've won the lot of the eights. And the guy's checked the ticket. And he said, um, it, it looks like you've won, he says, but I wouldn't want to tell you you've won in case like it's a fake ticket uh -huh. or like something. Like scratch cares, because people with really scratch cares think I've won a hundred grand. Aye, aye, aye. Aye. So I was like, right, I said, yeah, phone, camera, the number's in the back of the ticket. So I ran back down the road and I was like, mum, I need you, there's this phone, it's like an O2 or whatever number it is. She was like, you don't phone a number, I'm not going to phone a number. I was like, use the phone. <laughs> so uh, I phoned them up, you've got to tell them, like, where. Uh, you've got to tell them where you bought the ticket, what time roughly it was. Um, was there anyone in the shop? Like, there's loads of security questions mm -hmm. that you wouldn't even think, right? So she was like, are you sitting down? And uh, mum was like, oh, you're getting on her seat and that. And she was like, congratulations, you've won a million pounds. And I only know this because I've heard the phone call back in a documentary after years ago. Uh, and I say, uh, oh my God, are you joking me? Like, ah. And I was like, ah. and my mum was like, ah. my mum was pacing up and down the living room. And, that. and I was like, she was like, um, so they arranged for somebody to like come and uh, meet me and do all the press stuff and all uh -huh. that in the next few days and um, that was a stick for the What age were you? I was 17. I'm, I was 17 and a half. It's been a world win since, isn't it? Oh, it's been like I say that, that, the guy in the shop could have said, no, you've no, no one. He was sitting fucking. See, because I had checked it, but I would have said, I'll just take that Aye. ticket back. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> my nana said that to me on the phone. She would always get the ticket back, even if he says, I'll put it in the bin. That's all scheme chat and the treble wave. Aye, the guy did... was nice in the shop. Uh... He was like, get him and write your name on the back of it. And I was like, ah, put it in the back of it. I um, like they were like, you need to keep that ticket safe until you uh, meet the people for Cabinet and they like scan the ticket. So mm -hmm. I was like, ah, right. But they were like, didn't put it on social media, didn't put oh, it on anyone, right? Oh, I know, something came through your door. I was still on the phone, like that, on Facebook. <laughs> no, one, <laughs> no one will believe me, but I've won a million pounds. All my pals were phoning me, I was like, I swear. I was like, this is my ticket, right? So I <laughs> hid the ticket in, a, back here, in between a photo and, you know, the case and the footy mm -hmm. frame. I've put the photo back and I, I just couldn't sleep for about three days. I was like, I'm like Simon Cowell, like, mm -hmm. that's what I thought it was, like a million pounds. I'm in the whole year gang, like, I am the next Simon Cowell, but... Um, well, like, no, when you're going through on that, how long does it take a Campbell to come and get you? So, is like, there fucking a Willy Wonka coming to get you out uh, with a golden <laughs> ticket? How, so, how does it work out when they, right, you've won the ticket? How do they come and get what do they, what happens? So, the, you meet somebody for Campbell and a private banker. So, I went and I met, there was two, there was a financial person, there was a woman for Campbell and there was a private banker and she um, set up the private banking for me so that, um, People that work in the back the northern of the bank and like stuff they can't see any of that. Like that just looks like a normal account to them. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? And they've got a private bank. They scan the ticket and stuff, they give you the big check, they then organise that's about two or three days after that, after you win, um, depending on what day it is. So I hadn't no checked until the Sunday. Right. So this was maybe the Wednesday or the Thursday, and then maybe the Friday I had done all the mm -hmm. paparazzi and the check and stuff like that. Uh, and then I think so they and then I think basically next to the next day, it's in your bank account. Is it the full million or is it instalments or is it? It's the full. Is it? The full what? Do you get taxed then for that? No. It's tax free. That's fucking all right, isn't it? <laughs> but you get a lot of tickets <laughs> on a night. Yeah, it's all so, right. But obviously your life now has been a whirlwind. And people, I don't think people understand, because I think you spoke about one of a couple of shows, breakfast shows, and you spoke about it ruined your life and stuff. People don't understand for coming from a deprived area. I'm not saying, like I say, I've come, I come from a rough area. But 
when you don't know how to handle money, when you've the mess you've got in the bank's a fiver, when you're eating pieces and butter, all your life to eventually look, there's a million quid in the bank, your head's going to be fucked because there's no money management skills, there's no to take you aside. And if you did have somebody taking you aside, if you're fair, like I say, a scheme, you're probably going to think like they're only wanting to be nice to take fucking some of the money that I've got. How did you deal with when the money went into your bank? What was the first thing you bought? So I had been saving up, so what I'd done was obviously didn't get straight away, so it does take a few days for right. it to go through and I had been saving up for this Louis Vuitton handbag and I had just been paid, but I knew this money was coming into my bank, so I had thought I can use it the rest of my wages and just go up and buy mm -hmm. the handbag. So I bought the Louis Vuitton and I was like, oh, I want that one. So I bought the bag that I wanted. <laughs> What's it just been? It was only about, oh, it must have been about £1,200. Uh -huh. like, that was a lot of money. I can money. all right for a I million quid. That was like a month's wage at that uh -huh. time, do you know what I mean? So it would have took me about six months maybe uh -huh. to save that up. So, um, and then when I had the million pound, I was working at Louis Vuitton all the time. I was like, that, that, uh -huh. that. They knew me in there, but they knew, obviously, I'd seen it in the paper and stuff. So. Um, but it was good to walk out of our shop and not feel like they're looking at you and can you can't afford aye. this because I knew they knew I could afford it, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it's so funny how but people's perception changes you when you know you've got money, like I say, everybody judges and that's a difficult thing because with they judge you, you look at somebody and you don't know what they've got in their bank account, you don't know what kind of person they are and this is the society we're in, people judge far too quick in my eyes. So when you're walking into shops, like I say, that persona changes. You're walking in there confident. You're uh, walking in as if, you know what, I can order. I believe everything's attitude. So, like I say, you've got the, say the jungle, the lion's the king of the jungle. Right, I'm going to be off track here, but it's good, listen. So the lion's the king of the jungle, right? Not because it's the strongest, not because it's the fastest, not because it's the smartest, because it's fucking attitude. Because it believes it's the king of the jungle. So for anybody thinking that they're no smart enough, or they're no fast enough, or they're no clever enough, Again, it's all down to attitude, walking into uh, that shop, knowing that you only have £1,200 quid a month, probably shoulders down, thinking, I wish I could get that, they're looking at me, probably laughing, but then as soon as you won that million quid, you're walking in, shoulders out, wings spread, give me that, that and that, and uh, you're fucking sacked, I'm getting you the sack. <laughs> uh, so for, when you won all that, what was the, how was the steps for your life? What was the, how was, obviously, you, it's like anything, no matter if you get a million pound, ten million, a grand, the novelty does eventually wear off as well, uh, do you know what I mean? The buzz eventually goes. So when you won it, bought your bags, did you have a bit of fun, enjoyment? Right, so I sort of like gave some of my family and that, family and friends, like I've mm -hmm. done that first. Then I went and like squashed a bit, like I thought I need to know, like my family were encouraging me today as well, to know how much it was, Ken, they were like, you need to go and splash a bit, mm -hmm. Ken, and Love. I, I, and um, just so that I would never regret it, do you know what I mean? Go and buy the things you wanted to buy, go on holidays mm -hmm. that you wanted to go on. So that's what I've done, and then I got to a point my family were like, you need to have a serious, think about investments mm -hmm. and then um, they were saying like you need to kind of like maybe buy property and mm -hmm. invest in it for like put it in the ISAs and bonds that you can't open until like a few years time mm -hmm. and then um, so I've done that and then so I basically done all the things I wanted to do mm -hmm. I bought a couple of properties on the way um, then went a wee bit raj again and then mm -hmm. and there I just but I think people forget you're only fucking, you're still only 23. <laughs> You've been out the papers, it seems as if since I was born for the last fucking 34 years. It's, 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 it's non stop. See, you want it and all, listen, no matter if you're a football player or whatever, people come out the woodwork and want to be your pal. Did you find that as well when you'd won that? Like, people who probably wouldn't give you the fucking time or dare even speak about you wanting to be your best pal? Aye, so I had people like on Facebook and that, I had people that say, oh, I knew her at school. Or, I, I used to do this, but I think, no, you never let like, no, you absolutely mm -hmm. never. Like, so I've always had the same sort of group of pals. Uh, I have met a couple of people that are now my best pals that I've met on the way, but for different reasons other than like money, do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, my best pals now are lassie that I hated because she used to message my ex-boyfriend mm. about the football. Dirty bastard. And I was like, ah, but then I realised once I started talking to her, she actually got a boyfriend and, do you know what I mean? She, she wasn't messaging him like that. And, mm -hmm. I, and now we're best pals and I think, mm -hmm. Ken and she's, she's no bit money in that. Like we go out for dinner and she'll pay for mm -hmm. it, and and it's just weird. But there's people that do come out, and I'm like, ah, you wouldn't speak to me before. Of course, life works in mysterious ways, and like I say, it must be hard for you enough because like, you're always in the paper relationships, men. Well, you know yourself, but uh -huh. for you to trust somebody, how can you fully trust them for uh, the way you, as for you as a person, or the way you because the attention you get because of all that, uh, so it must be difficult for uh, you. It is really hard, especially guys, because I think to myself, 
So, but I'm not sure attention, no in a bad way, no in a big way, because I don't think I'm pretty or whatever, right? We shouldn't put yourself down, no. I, I think you look well. I she's know, got another blonde hair on that now, she's, <laughs> she's maturing. No, it's not that I don't know, I, I just, um, I'm not big heated or anything, right? And mm -hmm. I, well, certain stuff. Um, so, see, when a guy speaks to me, I think, if I had known the lottery, like, would you, would you be speaking to me? Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? He's got an agenda. If I never had over 100,000 followers on Instagram, mm -hmm. would you be liking my photo? Or would mm -hmm. you be wanting a picture with me on my mm -hmm. Instagram story? Do you know what I mean? So I think all these things, and then I think, I, I, it's just so hard. Like, I, I never know a guy's intentions, and everybody else can always see it before me. Mm -hmm. And I like play it out in the long run, and then I'm like, ah, I've wasted a year or two of my life, and I think. But nothing's ever wasted, like I say, you live and learn. We learn and grow it, and there's not any such thing as. A mistake, everything's a lesson in my eyes. Mm, right. Obviously, when you're going through all that, but then for being in secure units, I was actually at a secure unit having a talk Wednesday, a place called The Good Shepherd, which is down in Greenock. And let's like say the winds are phenomenal, and the people working these secure units are absolutely phenomenal. The work they do right. is unbelievable, but again, it can stem from insecurity issues as well. For when you're younger, then it, it stems into a relationship, so it's hard to find that trust that you can love somebody because. But you're still only fucking young. Yeah, only no. 23, man. Wait till you get to 34. I think, see, because like when I was younger, I never had stability in that. Like, and I craved feeling like loved and like I just wanted mm -hmm. somebody to put me first. Do you know what I mean? And I wasn't, I wasn't always the first option. Do you know what I mean? Like my mum and dad had um, drug problems. Do you know what I mean? And that was their main priority at one point in their life. And mm -hmm. I didn't resent them for that. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's a learning curve for them. And um, and so I feel like for then. I've just sort of, I've always craved that. So when when a guy does show me a bit of attention, I think we are women mm -hmm. for the right reasons. I'm like, ah, oh my God, this is the one I'm mm -hmm. going to be with for the rest of my life. It's because you're craving that love. Like I say, well, I want to be loved the same as me. If I fall in love with somebody, what happens is because I've got insecurity issues myself, so what happens is when that, they feel and start getting strong, I'll do something stupid or I'll finish it because I don't want to feel that pain of getting rejected or getting yeah. hurt. So, like I say, we get a defence mechanism on, and then, but like I say, if you meet somebody then, you're a hundred mile an hour, bang, you love that attention, we crave that love because this abandonment issue stem for when you're younger. Aye. Do you know what I mean? It's not as if, like our parents, they, they do what they do, my mom and dad were hard working people when they, and it's getting brought up in a rough place, but it doesn't mean you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm thinking I'm better than people, it's not that I think I'm better than my dad or my sister, I just want better for them, so for me to have better for them, I become a better person as Aye. well. And everything comes down to the, break, the mindset as, as well. Like I say, all the stuff you went through, and I don't think people know that through it's secure. Like I say, you're up and down. So if, especially you wanting that, it's just, it's went for none of us having nothing to fucking everybody knowing who you are. In the yeah. UK, especially Edinburgh. So it must be difficult. Do you know what I mean? I don't think people get to see that. The papers, like I say, mud sticks. So if you're constantly in the papers, people just think, oh, we rich kid fucking raised up in a, with a golden spoon, no realising. The, the traumas and the effects that you had. No. But like I say, you're very grounded, you're very intelligent as well, so I wouldn't put yourself down and you've always worked for a very young age. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that you want a fucking million quid, which is, <laughs> I think, some laugh. Man, I think it's brilliant. Oh, it is some laugh, to be fair. I know, and obviously, did you get a season ticket? Because I know you're a big high beat fan. <laughs> yeah, I did actually. I've had one. I had one before anyway. Did you? That was something I always enjoyed doing. Um, so I, I do enjoy going to the football. I've sort of grown out a wee bit now. Um... I want to see you grown out because everything is, <laughs> is doing part of something. It's, you've got some involvement somewhere. Um, no, I do, I do enjoy going to the football and um, I, I like it. Something, um, something different. I mean, I feel like I like putting my makeup on and going out with my pals and mm. going shopping and that. But I like also when I start to go to the football. Do you know what I mean, it's tight. I feel like I can get my anger, no anger. Like, I'm not sure that you're screaming no, I know, but I... uh, women in the crowd. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But, but yeah, I think. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a fair <laughs> uh, No, but I think um, it's, I, I do enjoy it, do you know what I mean? And um, it's something that I look forward to at the weekend. Where did that come from, the, the passion for hips? Who had that? Who you raised well, no you that? Into that. Uh, <laughs> so when I was, uh, so when my dad uh, supported a different football team, we're not going to go down that I don't road. Even here, right? no, no, I'm not. No, my dad supported a um, different football team when me and my brother. I was born first. My dad wanted a wee boy and. I was born first and I was like, ah, fuck. Mm -hmm. So my brother came after me anyway, so he um, he only supported it because his uncle took him to a couple of the games when he was younger, right? So when we were born, they thought, I need to support a local team so that I can take Ken, Jane and Billy to the football games. So, and the closest team to us was Edim uh, Hibs. Do you know what I mean? We were in Nidra, so it wouldn't make sense for us to go all the way to Gorgie 
and mm -hmm. I said about shit anyway. So, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That, so I, it just so happened that uh, it went to it was just a road that was the closest team to us. Yeah. That I'm all for that can support your local team. I mm -hmm. think so. These people fed them that sport Rangers and set up the camera. Ah, part timers. Aye, so um, so it was just Hibs, and then we went to the football. With my dad when we were younger, and then I've always stuck to it, even no matter where I've been. Um, like family or care or whatever, mm -hmm. I've always, it's always been something that I've been interested in, Go do you know what I mean? It's falling, you've loved, it's never left you, aye. it's not going to leave you. I know, um, so I have my ups and downs in there, I know. So. That's alright, it's like life, isn't it? Aye, it's good. When, it's good. when you started getting a lot of, it, like I say, the attention, the limelight in the papers all the time, how did that affect you? There's any, like, obviously bullying, trolling, all the bullshit of the day that comes with all that territory. Aye, so I think, like, I genuinely think I'm quite, like, hard-hearted, I'm quite a tough nut, like, but everybody's always like, ah, so I've always been telling, like, didn't read the comments, okay? So the people that write the comments are the people that have not got a job, they sit the in the biggest shite bags in the world, right? Aye, they sit behind the computer or whatever, and it's normally like, um, for, if there's a hundred people got to write a comment, eight of them will write a bad one, twenty of them be a good one. You didn't remember the good ones, so always the bad ones you remember. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, but I can't help myself when something comes out to read the comments. And I think, but it is bad, like some people take it too far, I think like, if fair enough people can have an opinion, I get that being in the paper all the time, people might think, oh, her again, or like, what's the issue with her, like, um, I, get, I get that, but sometimes like, it's pure personal, like, the story can be about like me and Hibs or something on my social mm -hmm. media, and then they're like, oh, we hope you die and that, and I'm like, what? Like, what's I've... the worst comment that's affected, that's stuck by you? Um, so, like, comment-wise, I've just, just ones about my family, like my mum and that, I just think, like, like, I hope her family dies, like, I've had them. Nah, see, that's not fucking right, that. And then, obviously, <laughs> the acid threats and that, that came for, for being in the paper, do you know what I mean? This, somebody who, I do, do not have a clue who it was, um, started just saying, well, I've got to pour acid in my face and that, what? and it was just, it was mental. I remember I was driving through it, well, I wasn't driving, my pal was driving, I was in past street, we got to see Great, uh, Drake in Glasgow, mm -hmm. that was when it was, and I was driving through and I was like, Tamika, I'm actually scared, that like, this guy knows quite a lot about me, like, he was saying stuff about in the media and that, and I was like, he knows too much for mm -hmm. it to know, so I had to report it to the police and that, I'm not too sure what happened, but I never got, never had anything again for like, like that. But that was probably the scariest thing, because I was actually like walking about the street thinking, like, has somebody mm -hmm. got to pour acid in my face, or am I going to open my front door mm -hmm. and be it? But you, uh, as well, these people sit behind these screens, this is threats to a fucking 18, 19 year old lassie. These are the biggest cowards in the world. These are the ones that I'm telling you are sitting wanting after Doug and just taking life, eating a big packet of Doritos that haven't got any future themselves. So what happens is they project all their fears and insecurities onto that person because they see their faults in you, so they, they project, try and project it onto you. Like I say, it's the biggest cowards in the world, and uh, fuck them. Because they, they, they talk a lot of shite, and these people read these, constantly reading these, these articles for the papers, you're constantly watching negativity, so their brains must be fucked. Aye. So if you see a good looking lass that's one a million quid, you're going to fucking hate her if your life's in misery. Aye. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's always jealousy and bitterness when you go, I wish I had that life. But for the, like I say, the comments against your family, the comments against yourself, that's it's bullying, it's trolling. And for people to know your movements, like I say, you're constantly posting. You're fucking every social media outlet out there and you're constantly posting. So people are going to know your movements. Aye. But for their threats, like I say, a young lass as well, that's no good for your confidence. But people need to understand, you're, you're, you're only 23. Aye. That's somebody's daughter, man. Do you know what I mean? It's, or you can be somebody's mother. It's it, it's embarrassing for these people to write these comments. So, like I say, I'll rise above it and you will get stronger through it because I'm the same, 100 good comments, that one negative we can throw you. I'm starting to learn to deal with it now and I'm kind of going, do you know what, fuck it? Because that's my ego. My ego gets dented. You want everybody to love you and you want everybody to like you. So. Your ego get then you get stented. I don't really mind that. No, I understand. I know for a fact that no everybody's got to like me. Right? I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but that's fine. But what I, what I can't bother is the people that write it on a comment, right? Or they write it on Facebook or Twitter or some. I'll see it online anyway, and then I'll go into a nightclub in the town on a Saturday night, and they'll not say anything, or they'll try and actually be talk, talk to me. Mm -hmm. I and I'm like, I, I I think people don't realise how much I see, do you know what I mean? Or how mm -hmm. much I read into comments, or how much I actually mm -hmm. do spend looking through comments, which I probably shouldn't, mm -hmm. but I do, and I think you, I remember a few years ago when you did write that about me, do you know what I mean? And I didn't forget of it. Of course, you can't forget, because so, like I say, it does sting, but you're in, the, you're, in the, you're in the newspapers, you're in them constantly. It's not just every week or month, it's nearly off every day. I know, do you know what I mean? It's, it's fucking hit, and it's for, like, but then again, you're a high profile name, 
you're a young lass who won the Euro Millions, that's massive. And the like I say, the stuff you do, the Hibs stuff is constant. You know, Hibs die hard. See the thing with that though, right? I think to myself, like, I don't even look at myself and think like, oh, I'm a celebrity or that, right? So I think to myself, why should I not post up? Like, if I, if I hadn't won the yeah, lottery, right. I would post up, oh my mm -hmm. God, like hurry up on a mm -hmm. nine salon or whatever it was that mm -hmm. I put up, do you know what I mean? So what, what, what's because I've won the lottery, I shouldn't then. So I mean, I mm -hmm. get that some people are saying, well, you're in the line, like, you should think about it before you tweet. And I do think about stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But why should I not post what I want to post? Because I've got to think about what the papers have got to print. Mm -hmm. I think people think I phone the papers up and I'm like, I send this one, I've got to tweet, mm -hmm. put this in. I don't know, it sometimes grinds my gears as much as it grinds mm -hmm. theirs every day. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's getting to a point where I can't upload a picture yeah, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, I'm, I'm just a normal lassie. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I should be able to upload what I want. Uh -huh. and but the people who see you and all, they don't see you as a human being. They see you as a character. <laughs> so they see you as, she's not got any feelings. She, we can see what we want. It's, it's, it's fucking freezing in here. Isn't it, John? Isn't it? It's freezing! Uh, it's Whatever, pal, uh, Lee Jacks, he's got a new place open, but it's, it's fucking bald here, isn't he heating on yet? Eh, uh, aye, so the, the, the series of character. But like I say, you've done a lot of things and you've got to give yourself credit because you're handling it well now. You're becoming a cross, like I say, more mature. You're only mm -hmm. 23 and you will, you will get older and you'll, you'll mature a bit. Like I say, when I was 23, I was, and I've had a million quid, but if I did, I'd probably be dead. So I would, uh, I'd be because of the partying and all that stuff, so. Like I say, you've, you've educated yourself, you've had a good life, you've been at around the world. What can you see yourself doing in the future? What would you like to do? What would you like to get? What do you love to do? Obviously, you used to love doing hair. Could you ever go back to a normal job? Or do you think you'd be too much for you with people judging or coming in? And... It's something I've thought about because, well, I, I want to set up my own business, right? <clears throat> I just don't know what then. Mm -hmm. So, um, until I know, there's no point in me rushing and opening a some bed shop or opening a hairdresser's and then for a year or two down the line you'd be like, ah, I can hate this. Uh -huh. There's no point in, my mum was like, you're only 23, it's still alright to know, know what you want to do. Uh -huh. And my mum was like, um, she's basically saying, can just take your time, you don't have to rush into anything. Uh -huh. like, so, and it's something I think, I think to myself, should I just get a normal job and put my money uh -huh. away in investments and, uh -huh. and just um, live a normal life? And then I think to myself, Oh, I really want to get mm -hmm. up in the morning and do that, something. That is a struggle because you'll be that used to having a free for all to do what you want. But there comes a time as well when you need some stability again and I you know. need some structure. And like I say, money is an illusion and it might sound daft to people, but whether it's a million pound, ten million pound, there's plenty of people out there who are billionaires that want to commit suicide. And there's people with nothing. It's the way you perceive life. A lot of people concentrate on the things they've no got instead of the things they have got. Aye. So it's about then try to find your passion with something you love. It's took me. 34 years to find something that I love. I love doing this. I love speaking to people and interacting with people. And all the fuck ups I've done in the past kind of led us to this because when I speak about it, I kind of understand it that we're all kind of fucked up. But it's mm -hmm. to find something that you love, something that's worth getting up in the morning, which Aye. is difficult. And you're only 23, your whole life's ahead of you. And you're going to get mere media attention and other doors will open up for other avenues. So you just got to keep doing what you're doing. I think as well, see me like going into a normal job. I, I, it's, I have thought about my parents are all like, Ken, but while we're working, why don't you get a job? And then when, when mm -hmm. we wouldn't be working at the same time, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh, but I think another thing as well, I think I've always thought about if I go into a normal job or if I was quick to set up a business or if I worked in an office, certain people would be quick to say, oh, she's got no money left or mm -hmm. she's, and I, that's my own fault for thinking, for bothering what other folk would think. Mm -hmm. But as well, like, I think everyone does it, like they can't help but think, oh, what have they got to think, or what, of do you course, know what I mean? But that's just fear, again, through your, through your childhood and that, we're scared about people yeah. thinking, does it matter if you've got money or no, who gives a fuck, it's nothing to do with anybody. Yeah. Does it matter if you're at McDonald's, if you love it, then so be it, it's all about you. People are going to judge you no matter what, people, like I say, no matter if I do good, people judge and if I do bad, people judge, so it's not about that, it's about up here con controlling these fucking demons with think what everybody else thinks. And I think that's when, when people have a wee drink when they walk into places, including yourself, because it kind of takes that anxiety away. It kind of gives us a confidence as if we don't care. Yeah, right. So we kind of act daft when really listen to yourself a day. You're spot on, man. You're, like I say, you're educated, you're no daft. Your, your life you've came through to what in all your years, and then, like I say, one in that, when people think, oh, how can your life be bad, one in the fucking Euro millions? Because it can. Because mentally, you, you can't handle it. You'll see a lot of football players, you'll see a lot of actresses, your singers, 
Look, your Whitney Houston's, your Michael Jackson's, they're actually one of the richest people in the world, but they can't handle that fame and that success because it doesn't really mean anything because everything is within. It's about finding something that you enjoy. Like I say, money comes as second nature, and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong because they search for the money, they search for the relationship, uh, but when they get that, there's still something amiss because everything's in here. They kind of went down an avenue that they think as soon as they get that, then the life's complete, no realising that life still goes on as soon as you hit that fucking target. Aye. Do you know what I mean? It can be lonely as well. Exactly. See, like, obviously my circumstances may be different for a singer or whatever, but I've had a million pound, but no everybody in the won a million pound. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're all still, all my pals and that, like, they've they still got to work and they've still got to provide for their families mm -hmm. and that as well. Do you know what I mean? So it can be lonely. There's times Aye. where I'm like, I want a date, and I think, oh, I've never really got a date. Everybody's with. working. And then I think, if, even if I did want a date with someone, I'm like, oh, well, I'd need to pay for them as well, mm -hmm. which isn't a problem, but mm -hmm. it's now got to that point where I'm like, no, why should I do this mm -hmm. stuff? And it's getting to the, the, you're getting to that age now where you're thinking, right, you've had your fun, you've, you've had a life, you've dreamt a life that only some people, only people can just imagine doing that. And, but now maybe it's time to find a passion and something that you love to, to focus your energy into. Because later days, it's about just focusing what you want to do. And it takes time. It takes time, especially if you're just becoming more awake to it and going, right, wait a minute, I want to find something that I do, I want to do or I love. It does it. It's, it's a, like I say, it is a lonely journey. Especially mm -hmm. if you're sitting in your house yourself, but that's when you overthink and that's when you're looking for all your comments and that's when you end up fucking demented that you don't want to leave the house. Aye. Do you know what I mean? So it's a vicious circle and then at the weekends you're on the swally away at the Hibs game causing it. <laughs> What's the plans? Where do you, where do you see yourself in the future? So like obviously I've had like loads of TV opportunities and mm -hmm. stuff, some that um, I've said not to some that I've maybe considered or whatever. But see, like before, I've always been too too young. I've been bad and he'd know that I'm mm -hmm. not bad and he'd know, but. I think I was ever going to get away, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I feel like now, uh, going into 2019, like I want to maybe look at maybe TV opportunities and what um, and what I can I can get for that. Mm -hmm. but, do you know what I mean? These opportunities and they always got to be there, and I've got to remember that because I'm getting on like I'm, I'm 23. But do you know well, what I mean? It's fucking tough life. When isn't I'm it? 30 year old, nobody's got to uh -huh. be interested in the last of who was the youngest. Because by the time I'm 30 Somebody years old, there would be someone else. I think it's 18 now. By the way, I think it's like you've always got that. I think um, you've always okay. got to have that crown. Uh, so it is, which is a good thing. Well, aye, I say, so you're doing dry, you're doing dry January as well, aren't you? Aye. How are you getting on? Aye, alright. Like I don't mind no drinking. I've been invited to my pal's birthday at the end of the month, though, and I'm like, I'm on dry January, and they're like, but send the month, and I'm like, I know, but I don't want to be that boring one though that goes out. I hate going out and no can when you've got the car or something, and mm -hmm. I'm like, can I drink? And I'm like, oh. That's you so feel good. as if when you're out, but you've got a lot of eyes on you. Aye. Are you really, it's, it's paranoia kicks in as well, doesn't it? Oh, hundred percent. I feel like when I go out. People are waiting for me to fuck up. They're waiting to see me leave with whoever they want me. Mm -hmm. They're waiting that if there's someone else in there that's got a bit of profile, like they're waiting for me. I, I know there's people in there that are waiting to like say on Twitter or something, I saw Jane leaving with so-and-so or getting mm -hmm. in a taxi with so-and-so. Mm -hmm. I know that's what they want. They want me falling out of the nightclub. They want me lying there in my dress, hanging up in. And, mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I know that there's people that just want that bad stuff to come out about me. Mm -hmm. But um Because it makes her life feel better. Ah, uh, yeah, it does. That's what I, it does. It makes her life feel but better. But nah, uh, I'm still quite um I think now compared to like when I was 18, 19, I'm a lot more mature. I'm very wary about my surroundings mm -hmm. um in any circumstance. Um How do people treat you walking along the street and that? They're just people that don't know you or people how do you get any is everybody all right? I suppose it's not really that bad. I feel that people just look more than anything. Mm -hmm. but they maybe recognise me, but they'll not say. Mm -hmm. If we're in a nightclub or a bar, people will say, because they're fully the booze, mm -hmm. they'll say to me, oh, are you that lassie that, do you know what I mean, won the lottery or whatever? And, or what's your name? And when I, I'm like, you know my name before you've even asked me. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time people will just stare or they'll speak about it with their pals. So sometimes I walk in somewhere and my, my pals, it really annoys my pals more mm -hmm. than it annoys me now. I'm like, I let them talk, kind of like, who, case mm -hmm. I fuck. I normally start dancing or something, give them something mm -hmm. to talk about. But my pals are like, ah, what's your problem, Ken? Like, what are you all staring at her for? Mm -hmm. But I suppose that's just part and partial, yeah. Uh, just Oh, comes. but again, man, we don't need to accept that people fucking bad mouth us. Like I say, we can, we all try and bite the bullet and we all try and change and, and be good. But if somebody steps out of the line and, like I say, I'm trying to change my life, but. I'm still not going to lie down a bend off for fucking nobody. Aye. Do you know what I mean? If somebody gets out of line, then there's only so much 
you can take, you know what I mean? You've still got to defend yourself and it's hard because as soon as somebody does press their triggers on you, one night you might be in a bad mood, Hibs might have got beat for, for fuck's sake, but if somebody eventually pushes their triggers, and it's alright if you to push somebody or throw a drink and then... Then before I know I'm up close then getting you're, charged, you're the bad one, aye, and everybody is up reading the papers going, aye, she's look at her and all that, it's a fucking aye. disgrace. And that's what people want to see, which is sad. But again, you put yourself in these situations as well. It's no saying don't go it, but sometimes when you're with people to drink, you're really, it's not really the right environment for you. No, it doesn't no. mean you don't get to enjoy yourself, but you know yourself, it can, it can lead to the fucking stupid things. Do you know, know what I mean? Aye, it's so easy to do as well. So, love life and that now. Single? Aye, single. Um, aye, single, completely single. Do you look better for that? Jank. Aye. New hair and that, when did you get the hair done? So, uh, so what happened was I split up with my ex-boyfriend. Well, was, we split up anyway. Um, and then I came back up the road because I was doing South Living. And then I took a call my extensions out. Ken, like, new hair, new me. New hair, new me. Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> You don't change your hair. Like, <laughs> You're not going to change your hair. Yeah, like, that's a breakup thing. Like, uh -huh. no, no, a bad mm -hmm. breakup, but you know what I mean? So I took the extensions out. I had the shop blonde hair for a while. And then everyone was like, oh, you look like your mum and that. And I was like, oh, no. And I thought, I need to change. I was like, so I changed it. And then I put the weave back in. And then now I'm just um, going with it now. But I. I don't know, I, I don't, don't know what I'm looking for, like, I'm just sort of plain sailing now, I'm enjoying my uh -huh. life and... Which is good, like I say, like attracts light, Jane, so if your exes are fucked up, then it's, you've got to look at yourself as well, because all my exes were psychos, everyone, <laughs> but <laughs> it's because I was a bit fucked up, I was a bit loopy, uh -huh. like I say, light attracts light, so he's kind of meet that. Aye, it's, cause it's hard because I mean? obviously like, I'm a bit different to like, know the girl on next door, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a completely different circumstance, so I, like I'm portrayed as a psycho, but I, I actually, that is actually what I'm like. I, I'm a pure mm -hmm. psycho, do you know what I mean? Like, I will, I do what I know, all the details, and I'm like, where you going, what you doing, who mm -hmm. you be? That is what I'm like, mm -hmm. but that's probably because of stuff when I was younger. younger. And mm -hmm. then I've had bad relationships, do you know what I mean? And that's, that's just the way it is, and that's just the way I, I can change that, do you know what I mean? But you, again, you can work on it later. See, I'm insecure in that as well, because all the fucking about I done, I thought everybody was like me. So when I meet somebody, I thought they were like me. So all my paranoia, all my insecurities kick in, but you can change that because the better person you become then the better person you will attract and it's difficult because changing all that because we're scared to get hurt everybody in this world don't give a fuck who you are we're scared of getting hurt we're scared to let that that leash go mm -hmm. if you could just sit them in a wee cage and just let them in yeah. <laughs> for dinner that everything's good well, like, oh. it's because we know the, the reason why relationships are failing so much you know because when somebody falls out, they're not working at it. Back yeah. in the day, there's grannies and granddads out for 60, 70 years because they were stuck in the house and they worked on their problems. There, now man. you've got fucking Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Tinder. It's all just one big dating site because let's face it, the majority of people are fully is because of, uh, there's a kind of an attraction there. <laughs> she never says that, no. <laughs> but, but do you know what I mean? There's, you follow no, people I, because there's an attraction, then you like a couple of photos. photos you and... like three photos, two or three photos is kind of right. And then if they're, and if they're right, <laughs> The, your photos is that you go right with it, and then bang, you're right into the DM. So, <laughs> That's what I'm like. Aye, so aye. nowadays it's, it maybe works on a relationship because as soon as shit hits the fan, people just leave. The next aye, one, because aye. they know how easy it is. And it, it's not, a, it, it, I don't think it's a good way to live, but a lot of people look for that final piece of the puzzle way of finding a relationship. And they think, but if you're already fucked up or a, a nutcase, before that, I'm not saying you, but in general, if you and then meet somebody, you think that's me, the puzzle's complete. But then you're still a fucking nut. You're not, nothing's changing because two, three, one of down the line, Aye. the novelty he wears off. It's like as soon as you meet somebody, they're the best person in the world for two, three months Aye. because they portray themselves. They become that person who you think that they they want to be. But then the mask slips, Aye. and then they become a fucking complete wrong. And the reason no, because I was I was like that for two, three months. You think you're trying to be the good guy, but realizing I still had all my my issues that I had to work on. Uh -huh. Like I say, people can change. People can work on things, and we're human. We make mistakes. Every fucking day we're going to be making mistakes. It's obviously for yourself, it's more difficult because of you. you're a high profile name. Aye. Everybody knows you. So it is very difficult. How's your man that? How they've been with you the last few years? With everything? So they've been all right. They, um, she must worry about you though. Aye, she does. She does uh, worry a lot. She, um, every time I go out, she's like, where are you going? What are you doing? And I'm, I'm 23, can you stop asking mm -hmm. questions? She's like, but you're still my bear. And like, Aye. something could go wrong. I need to know these things. So she, she's a massive worry to that extent. But like, she's all right, I She, um, 
I just tell her when I'm doing something and she's like, oh, what are you doing this week? Or, mm -hmm. But she uh, just wants the best when we came up. I mean, so she's just, um, when I'm like, oh, I'm going on the telly or I'm doing this or that, she's like, just got to be careful, okay? You've got to watch. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's watching it. And, but um, obviously she wants me to do bigger and better things. She wants me to have a success story. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? She wants people to know who I am for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And do you know what I mean? So, and she's always happy for me to speak about stuff. Mm -hmm. and, Whatever, because she doesn't like me being portrayed as like she's always in that Facebook and all right and stuff. I'm like, stop mm -hmm. it, leave it. But she's like, you're still my brain at the end of the day. Sorry, stick up. She's gonna die for you. Aye, she's mm -hmm. like, um, I can't sit here and let these people say mm -hmm. stuff about you that they even know you. And I'm mm -hmm. like, just try. And um, but no, I families are good. My sister just had a burn. Good, congratulations. But, uh, What's eight her name? Ago, Roxanne. Roxanne, congratulations. <laughs> so she just had my nephew, and that, that's been class. Ken, it's like having my burn. It's, mm -hmm. It's good because it's something I want as well. So something you can love with foot. It's, with it's foot, pure aye, love, aye. and aye. you know it's no. There's no. Aye, I know. I'm not tied down, so aye, like, I don't even think about getting a babysitter aye. to go out. Or mm -hmm. I still have my life, but I mm -hmm. still have. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And he's class. I love him. It's that's a good. It's a good feeling. Well, your eyes to, to realise the, the the world is an innocent place. You, you look at Wayne's and you realise how innocent they are. They don't know what's happening yet. No. And then you get to 34 and you realise it's all fucked. It's all downhill for here. <laughs> But like I say, for like Jane, for what you've everything you've done in your life, like I say, I'll support you, man, through it. And I've always I always speak highly of you. You're a fucking crackpot, but again, so <laughs> so ma. So ma, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why we got on. But like I say, you're we on that. It doesn't matter what's happened in life, it doesn't matter who's done what. If people still support you at the end up, then like I say, it's, that's what it's all about. We all make mistakes and mm -hmm. we're gonna make mistakes till the day we die. We don't know people are conditioned for certain areas to think that certain things is is fine. And that's just the way it is. But like I say, you've got your full life ahead of you. You can achieve whatever you want to do. And I think you're going to do well. I think you will do well. Like I say, you think you're mature and that's the best I've seen you today. Aye. Soberest. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I mean, that probably uh, yeah. But for the future, like I say, going forward, I wish you nothing but the best. And for coming on today and telling your story, nothing but respect for you, Jim. No, it's fine. Aye, thanks a lot. Thanks. Cheers. You. Love Hair and Beauty Salon, based in Springburn, offers a full range of hair and beauty treatments from nail enhancements, dermal planning, lash lifts, henna brows and lashes, right through to the full colour and cut beauty work hair extensions. They also have their resident makeup artist Megan to complete the full package. You can visit them on social media on Instagram, Love Hair and Beauty 09 and Facebook, Love Hair and Beauty Glasgow. You can also make a telephone call to book an appointment at 0141 258-2070. AM Events are specialists in party wedding and event planning management. They offer services from full event planning and management right down to the standalone venue dressing. AM Events strive for 100% customer satisfaction every time from email updates and how about the planning is going, managing the day of the event. They will support you the whole way through. So for more information to make a booking, pop down to their showroom at Unit 2, Foundry Street, Atlas Industrial Estate in Glasgow. Their phone number is 0141 237 3020. So pop along or else their social media pages are on Facebook, AM Events and also Instagram at amevents.glasgow. Collins Morgan have assisted thousands of Scottish residents with financial difficulty. So if you are struggling to keep up with the increase in cost living along with managing debt, then message Collins Morgan on Facebook for free, friendly and regulated advice on the solutions available for you.